Blackfin Processor Core Architecture, Part 3. Welcome to this module on Blackfin Core Architecture. This module will introduce the bus and memory architecture of the Blackfin family. The additional Blackfin Core features will also be touched on, including DMA and power management features. This module is 11 pages in length and lasts just over 20 minutes. The Blackfin uses a memory hierarchy with the main goal of achieving performance comparable to the L1 memory, with an overall cost of that of the least expensive memory, which is the L3 in this case. In a hierarchical memory system, it basically has levels of memory. The memory that's closest to the core is faster. L1 memory has the smallest capacity, but items that are in L1 can be fetched single cycle. Some of the Blackfin variants have L2 memory. This is a larger block of memory, but it's further away from the core, and latency is a little bit greater. All Blackfins support L3 or SD RAM, so this is where the bulk of code or data could be stored. Very large capacity, but also high latency is associated with it. Portions of L1 can also be configured as cache, and this allows the memory management unit to prefetch and store copies of code or data that might be in L2 or L3 stored in L1. That way you get L1 performance. Here is the internal bus structure of the ADSP BF533 processor as an example in this case. We're going to look at the modified Harvard architecture as well as talk about some of the performance aspects of the fetches work. There are two different domains, the core CCLK and system SCLK clock domain. When we talk about a processor running at 600 megahertz, for instance, we're talking about the CCLK frequency. That's the rate at which the core can fetch instructions and fetch data from L1 memory. In a single cycle, the processor can fetch 64 bits worth of instruction and up to two data fetches, up to two 32-bit data fetches, from L1 can occur at the same time. In many applications, the code and data, for instance, could fit into L1, and that's fine, so the processor is running at the highest performance possible. Of course, if you have a large application, you could store parts of your code and data in external memory in SDRAM. Because the processor can generate addresses for anywhere within the Blackfin's 32-bit memory space, the address for instruction could very well be pointed to something in SDRAM. If that was the case, the core is fetching, say, 64 bits from SDRAM. The processor will go across the external access bus through the EBIU to the external port bus, which in this case is a 16-bit wide bus. To fetch that same 64-bit instruction, it requires four fetches from SDRAM. In this case, the system is in the SCLK domain. The SCLK domain in the BF533 is limited to 133 MHz. So if we're running at 600 MHz, this will top out at 120 MHz. So you have a 5 to 1 difference in clock rates. Those four cycles that we just spent fetching from SDRAM actually cost 20 core clock cycles. The Blackfin has configurable memory and the best overall performance can be achieved when the code or the data that is to be processed resides in L1. Now there's two methods to be used to fill the L1 memory, caching and dynamic downloading, and Blackfin processor supports both. Microcontroller programmers typically use the caching method where you just set up the cache in the memory management unit and any large programs will benefit from this and will just automatically store or cache copies of the code in L1. Cache is the first level of memory that we reach once the address leaves L1. Cache allows the users to take advantage of single cycle memory without having to specifically move instructions or data manually. In other words, it takes away that setting up a DMA and moving the data or instructions to the background. L2 and L3 memory can be used to hold large programs and data sets. Also, the paths to and from L1 memory are optimized to perform with cache enabled.
What happens is once a cash line transfer occurs, nothing can interrupt that cash line fill, so it does have a high priority over other transactions that occur. Cache automatically optimizes code and data by keeping recently used information in L1. There is an algorithm called LRU, least recently used. What this means is first, if of all we have several ways to store a cache line in internal memory. Once we have all four ways filled and we need to find space for another cache line, the least recently used algorithm basically says whichever cache line was used the longest time ago, that's going to be the first one to give up its space to the new cache line. The DMA controller has dedicated buses to connect between the DMA controller itself and the set of peripherals, the DMA-capable peripherals in the Blackfin, the external memory L3 or SD RAM, as well as the core memory, so there's dedicated buses for all these different paths. The Blackfin also supports various power management options. One of them, for instance, is built to maintain low active power. Any peripherals that are not used, you typically have to set a bit to enable them, are automatically powered down, thereby conserving some power. There's also a dynamic power management mechanism that allows to dynamically change the operating frequency and the core voltage to optimize power for particular applications. For instance, there's an onboard PLL that's used to multiple the clock in frequency to the desired operating frequency, so we can step that up as much as 64 times. We can also optimize the core voltage for the desired operating frequency. Typically, when you're operating at a lower frequency, you don't need as high a core voltage. There's also a number of standby power modes, five altogether. Full on doesn't have any real power savings. The PLL is running. The operating speed is typically at full. In an active mode, the processor is running from the clock infrequently, so you're not using the PLL, so this is a lower power operation. Both the core and the peripherals are running. In sleep mode, the PLL is running, the SCLK is typically running at full speed, but the CCLK has stopped. The core has been put into an idle state, just sitting there waiting for peripheral DMA transfer to complete, for instance. The Blackfin does have a real-time clock on most of the variants that has an alarm and wake-up feature. The real-time clock is actually a separate subsystem and has its own clock and also has its own power supply. It is not affected by any of the software hardware resets. In fact, the real-time clock is one of the devices that can wake up the Blackfin out of the deepest sleeps, including Hibernate. Here is the types of power savings that you can get as your application progresses. What the core has is the ability to optimize the power consumption in the different phases or applications. For instance, at the start, the core might be required to have a fair amount of performance, so of course there's no power savings. But it might be going on to another stage where we need to go into a much quieter state. So in this case, here the core will go down to a lower frequency. We can adjust the PLL, adjust it down, but also when we're operating at a lower frequency, we generally do not need as high a core voltage. What the chart is showing here is that just by reducing the frequency, you do get a reduction in power consumed. But if you can also reduce the voltage, then the power reduction can be deeper. Power consumption, or at least the dynamic part of power consumption, is proportioned with the operating frequency, but it's also proportioned of the square of the core voltage. What the diagram is illustrating here are just the different power mode transitions that Blackfin supports. Say, for instance, coming up out of a reset, we might go into full-on state where the PLL is running, the CCLK is running, the SCLK is running, and through the controlling bits in the PLL control register, we can switch basically from one state to another. For instance, we can go to the active state by disabling the PLL, switch back to the full-on state by re-enabling the PLL with the bypass bit. From either the active or the full-on states, we can go into a sleep mode by shutting down the core clock, and we can wake up to one of the other states depending on the state of the bypass bit. To do the same thing, to go into deep sleep mode by shutting down both clocks.
The Blackfin processor has a JTAG port, and one of the uses for it is to do in-circuit emulation. This allows the designer to do no intrusive debugging, so your application is running full speed on the target. Of course, once the processor stops, you can go and read memory, read registers, and change things. There's also BTC, or background telemetry channel support, with the Visual DSP tools. What this allows us to do while the processor is running, if we want to, say, get some information from the memory buffer and display it in Visual DSP, we don't have to shut the processor down. Instead, we define what buffers we want to share. We need to link in the BTC library. There's a small bit of code we need to execute, but essentially we can do a data exchange for debug purposes with a running target, which is very useful during the initial stages of your code development.